Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we have a 5-port Gigabit Cloud Managed POE Switch from Ruiji, the RG ES205GC-P and I would like to say thanks our friends from Ruiji for sending us this product to test. In this video, we will unbox the unit, check the device and see the web management console on the things that we can actually configure. Add it to our Ruiji Cloud application using our workstation and lastly would be my recommendation. Without further ado, let us unbox the unit. We have a warranty and quick start guide, a power cable, a power adapter, and the actual unit itself. For my first impression, I'm still amazed on how small this switch is considering that it has gigabit connectivity and active PoE. Still durable with metal casing. Panless for quiet operation, and I'll include a link on the description below for the full specification. Now, how do we actually use this product? As you can see, there are five ports, and as per design, port 5 is separated because port 1 to 4 has PoE, while port 5 is just a regular gigabit port, so you should always use your port 5 for your uplink, meaning that one will be connected to your router, maybe modern router, or source of internet, or maybe another switch. But honestly, you can connect your uplink anywhere. It actually depends on your design and topology. But for us, port pipe is connected directly to our Ruigi 1200G Pro. And as you can see, it is working. And another one, let's try to add a LAN cable coming from our desktop. And it works as well. Then let's try to connect another LAN for our switch like the ES105D and connect it on the port 5 of that ES105D and it works and lastly let's try to add another PoE device like an access point as you can see it still works even though it is not a Ruigi product you can add PoE devices as long as it matches the specification of the switch another is that you don't need to worry about the PoE will damage your non PoE devices because this is actually using active PoE and you can also disable that PoE function on a specific port and still use it for network connectivity. Now let us try to access the web management console by a web browser to see on what are the things that we can actually configure. A reminder that I will upload another video for this specific switch and that one will cover using the Ruigi Re cloud application on managing this switch. Okay, right now, let us try to access the web management console and see on what are the capabilities of this Ruigi RG ES205GC-P. The default IP address for the device that I have is 10.44.77.200. It might actually vary for your device. You can actually look for this IP address at the bottom of the switch. And right now, let's hit enter for this one. Okay, and directly, it is asking me for a username and password because it is not asking me to create a new password because this is directly connected to a Ruigi wireless router, the 1200G Pro. So I'll be using the same credentials with that Wi-Fi router. Okay, and after that one, you will be redirected to the homepage and give you the basic information. Like for example, we have here the VLAN settings and it is currently turned on. And the drawing on top or the diagram, we have actually five ports. And as you can see, port 1 to port is for downlink and the P port is usually for uplink because the P port doesn't have any PoE capability. So always put your uplink on the last port or the fifth port. Okay, and here you can actually do some basic configuration if you want. Like for example, you can disable a specific port on this page and change the speed and duplex if you want it to have a half duplex or full duplex and other things like flow control. Aside from that one, you'll be able to see here the PoE devices that is connected on your switch. And right now we have one PoE device and it is consuming 2.6 watts, as you can see here. And you can restart or repower it on. Just click on this one. And next one will be the system settings. Under the system settings, you will have the device info where you'll be able to see the basic information regarding your switch, the serial number, the MAC address, and everything. You also have your IP settings. You can set the auto obtain IP. For now, let's just enable this one. And next one will be the account settings. You can change the username and password on this page if your switch is not directly connected 
to a Luigi Wi-Fi router. And next one, we have here reboot. For the reboot, you can reboot the switch. Upgrade, you can upgrade the firmware on this page. And restore default if you want to restore to factory configuration and reboot the device. Next one will be under monitoring. For the monitoring, this is basically for monitoring the things on your switch. Like for example, we have here uh, IP address and this is the master device. Okay, and this is the EW1200G Pro that is my Wi-Fi router. And the number of switches will be also shown in here if you have more than one. Next one would be port statistics. Like for example, is it connected and you have here the receive and transmit uh, rate, packet, success, and if there are any failures. Next one will be cable diagnostics. You can actually run this one and check if there are any issues with the LAN cable that you're using. Okay, and as you can see, there are other informations here. Like for example, the port 3 is cable works well and there are other information on the port 2, 4, and 5. Okay, you have to check that one if there is a problem with that. And lastly, we have here LoopGuard. LoopGuard is actually helpful because I encounter Loop when I'm still working in a huge company. It is a headache. Good thing with this one, it has a LoopGuard. Okay, next one will be switch settings. For the switch settings, this is where you can actually change the port settings. Like for example, we have here a uh, port. You can select which port you want to do and if you want to disable that port and change the speed if you want. Like for example, 10, 100 and gigabit network connection. Also the duplex and flow control. This is also applicable on the home page. And aside from that one, we have here port mirroring where you can mirror a port and next one port isolation then static mac if you want to provide a static mac for a specific port and next one is search mac if you're looking for a mac address in your network you can do it here and of course the mac list the list of devices that is connected on your network and you also have your also dhcp snooping and next one would be vlan settings for the vlan settings you can create a vlan id like for example maybe a vlan 2 and just add and you will have here a list of VLAN ID that you have created and if you want to delete you just delete here click on the specific VLAN and click delete okay after you have created the VLAN ID you can select VLAN settings under the VLAN settings if you want to set for example a specific port like a port 2 to have a VLAN type seat access or trunk you can do it here and of course change the VLAN that you have created okay and next one would be qos settings for the qos settings we only have here a port rate and storm control under port rate you can actually click on a specific port like for example port 2 so input or output or maybe all so maybe let's click input and status is enabled okay so if you enable this port rate you will be able to change the transfer speed on your specific port maybe let's just try to change it to 10 and save okay and as you can see it will only have 10 megabits per second transfer speed 10 up and 10 down and of course you can enable storm control in here as well and the type you can change to broadcast unicast or multicast and select select the specific port next one will be the poe settings okay for the poe settings you can actually disable specific port let's disable maybe uh port 3 okay and as you can see the poe configuration will not work on this port but technically you'll be able to use the port for other devices that doesn't actually require a poe capability okay enable that one for now and that's it for the web management console or the things that we can do on the rges 205 gc p that one was accessing the switch locally and now let us try to check on how we can access this switch remotely okay right now let us try to check the cloud management for our devices like for example we have already created our credentials or our account for the cloud management if you haven't actually created one you can create here register one it will be easy so now let us enter the credentials that we have set okay and after entering the credentials you will be redirected to the main page of the cloud management for ruji and we have your device and as you can see 
we have the 1200G Pro as one of our devices that is actually monitored on the cloud management. And right now we don't have the switch because I have removed it manually. But if you connect that switch directly to this 1200G Pro, it will be automatically added on the cloud management tool. Okay, and right now let's try to manually add that device. You just need to click the plus button on the top and click on add device. And after that one, so we will be adding a switch. And this is the JK Home or the group that we have already created and click next. And next one will be you need to enter the serial number of the device that you have. For example, for us, this is the switch and maybe set an alias. So switch. Then after that one, click finish and the device is being added on our cloud management console. And right now it's still waiting. Let's try to check this one. Not sync. So, okay, let's check. So everything is synced right now, but we have missing information here. So let's just click on refresh. Okay, and device. And as you can see, we already have our switch on the cloud management console and see on what are the things that we can check on this web management console or cloud management console. Okay, and as you can see here, the topology, we have the 1200G Pro. This is our wireless router and this is the switch and as you can see port is 5 and right now the monitoring tool or the monitoring tab that we have on the right side it gives us the basic information like for example port 1 2 3 4 and 5 and we have created another VLAN as what we have shown you earlier we have VLAN 2 in here and the other information like the port is it enabled you can see the monitoring, just the basic information and interface rate, POE list, and detailed entry slug history. So for the configuration, this is the things that we can do. Like for example, maybe let's try to click on uh, 2. You can enable or disable this device. This is actually has a POE. As you can see, the icon there, there is a lightning icon. This is for a POE device. You can disable, enable, and configure the duplex and speed description and poe capable open or you can disable that one aside from that one we have here the vlan you can add a vlan again and create a vlan if you want and so on and so forth you also have your dhcp snooping and loop prevention and long distance transmission i would just like to remind you if you enable this one the transmission and speed for or will be changed to pull duplex 10 mbps okay and aside from that one, we have your diagnostics. For diagnostics, you can actually, uh, you can click on diagnose. Okay, and as you can see, for port 3, we have click diagnose and see the following results below. And the cable are in good condition. Okay, these are the basic things that we can do on this cloud management console for Ruiji. So if you are looking for a network switch, try to consider this one. It has a lot of features. You might not need that POE right now, but it will come in handy if you want to add a POE access point or maybe POE cameras or any other POE devices that you purchase in the future. And the best part is this is really easy to configure and manage. And I think the only thing that I'm missing is I haven't actually tried the NVR camera recognition. Maybe I'll try that one if I have a device to test. And if there is other things that is missing, or if you have comment and suggestion, comment down below or message me at JK Chavez and Epi. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.